everyone. Welcome to this special interview here on the Geek Buddies with one of our longtime Geek Buddies that we couldn't be more excited to welcome to the show. He has cur- he is currently has an incredible animated film out right now called Superman, Man of Tomorrow. You've watched his work in stuff like Le- Lego DC Superhero Girls, Justice League Action, Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the 13th Ghost, The Death and Return of Superman, Sergeant Rock, Legend Quest, uh, some more DC uh, superhero girl stuff and Reign of the Superman. And as I just mentioned, he currently has out this film now, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Geek Buddies, our friend, writer, and uh, overall genuinely awesome dude, Tim Sheridan. How are you, Tim? I'm really great. Thank you, guys. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, for you to just read down my IMDb. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. listen, like, what, they didn't. They know. didn't send me an official bio for you, so I did my best. Listen, I, I meant know, they, you know, they don't know who I am. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. You know, I. Uh, our just, publicist, yeah, you just you just email you just email in words and they're like yeah we'll take these we can run with that <laughs> that's exactly right we can probably put these in some kind of order that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah i am so excited to be here we have to explain to yes. people who don't yeah. know right. that we are old not just geek buddies but college buddies yeah and, yeah like uh, so yeah what's that well, no, I was going to say, like, as we like to say, like, what we like about the Geek Buddies is as much as John and Shannon and I have worked in the industry and been friends for years, yeah. so many of our friends kind of came out to L.A., followed different paths, uh, similar paths, circuitous paths, but that we have so many friends that are doing awesome things. And, yeah, I was uh, I was talking to you about this before we set up the interview about how here you are writing Superman, uh, Man of Tomorrow, and I actually remember being in college as a freshman watching the first episode of Bruce Timm's uh, Superman Adventures in your apartment with you since we were all uh, Florida State students together. Oh my gosh. It's been a minute. First of all, let me explain to you that I forgot that. (laughs) Old, and I don't remember anything. But yes, and uh, uh, that must have been like your first semester at school or something, right? Yeah, yeah. You were like brand new. I remember... Like you were, you were like the ultimate extrovert. I think you probably still are. Yes, um, very yeah, much. I think, that, I think that's still, I think that's still accurate. Yeah. No. For, for, for me to like, you know, to invite somebody over to watch Superman, uh, who I just met, that's a big commitment. So yeah. you obviously it, it, made a big impression. It clearly worked out for all of us. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> so you, you made know, the right you, choice. Yeah, clearly. Luch, Lukic, who's the supervising producer of Man of Tomorrow, was a storyboard artist on that premiere of wow. Superman the Animated Series. I mean, who would have thought that, you know, these many, many years later that, <laughs> um, that I'd be working for him? It's well, it's, awesome. It's an incredible film. It, 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 the basic plot synopsis is Daily Planet intern Clark Kent takes learning on the job to new extremes when Lobo and Parasite set their sights on Metropolis. It's got an incredible cast here. Tim, Darren, Chris, Zachary Quinto, uh, Alexandra Daddario, who's fantastic. Neil Flynn, uh, 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 Bellamy Young is in this as well. So many great voiceover people are involved in this project and you wrote words for them. How did you get involved with this? You'd written Reign of the Superman. So was this just the next logical step? Did they come to you or did you pitch them with this story? Uh, no, you know, it was, it was, uh, I had done some work. I'd worked for my first real job in animation was on a show called Justice League Action. Right. And I got brought Which is a in- great show. Mm-hmm. It's such a great show, and it's for, unfortunately, a lot of people didn't see it because it got kind of programmed into oblivion. But uh, if you can find it now, I think it's streaming now, and uh, mm-hmm. it's great. I think people really tend to, you know, really gravitate to it. Mm-hmm. The supervising producer of that show was Butch Lukic. Um, uh, uh, Jim Creek was a producer on that show as well. They, um, a- Alan Burnett, uh, the great Alan Burnett, that's where I met him and kind of learned, uh, you know, a, a lot of what I'm doing now from that guy. Um, but they, uh, they were, we did reign of the Superman and then they were getting ready to do uh, a new, a new movie and Butch having worked with Butch and Jim, they, you know, happily called me and we sat down and started plotting out sort of what the kind of Superman story, you know, we wanted to tell as a movie, we were very lucky because, um, you know, we didn't have the demands on us, 
of continuing in the, the sort of storyline of the, all the movies that had come before. We were really getting to do a, a standalone story. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, we just, that's, that's how I got into it. I had done some stuff happily with those guys and they liked what I was doing and they called me back. Well, that's good. I, so a question about that though. I mean, uh, super love this. Like I really, uh, thankfully, like whenever you're going to interview, no, whenever you're going to interview your friend about something, whenever you're going to interview your friend, you watch it and there's a little bit of trepidation. You're like, I <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> Look, we're but, all uh, actors at Florida State. We know what we say. That was really like, great work. Knows. That was great work. Yeah, we. Hey, hey, congratulations! Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> you great, guys, I can tell. Great you costumes. Know. Great That's, costumes. You know, <laughs> he really knew your lines. The costumes, but, uh, the costumes were amazing. Yeah. The best that uh, somebody said, like when you see someone, when, when you see someone who had a really bad performance or wrote something really bad, and they ask you how it is, you just go, you just go, hey. You really did something. <laughs> you really did something. Um, but no, actual question for you. Uh, there's been so many in comics, in animation. Uh, as I said, like that's what made me think about it, watching the first episode of uh, Superman Adventures with you. Like, what? How do you tackle an origin that's been told so many times? You guys had such a different take, such a fresh take. You sort of rearranged a lot of the characters who we expect to see. Some of the characters that we know we're going to see, we saw in a different way. Like that's a big, it's a tall order to kind of retell the Superman origin story. Uh, how did you tackle it? Where did you begin? What did you want to do differently going into this? Okay, here's, here's where we get into why it is so great to be here with you two. And, and talking to you about this movie. Because if, if I was doing any other interview with, with you know, anyone, um, I would be respectful. But with you. Oh, great. Oh, great. Right. I get to say. Thank you. Think, which is, it is, it is not exactly, an, I think we're really stretching the definition of an origin story. If mm. you call this movie an origin for Superman. Um, you know, when we, when we started talking about it, we said, look, we're not going to do, we literally, the first thing we said when we sat down, we said, we're not going to do an origin story. We can't do an origin story. <laughs> so we, we just, we're not going to do it. So what we will do is let's, <laughs> so let's do a, a coming of age story early yep. in Superman's life and career. And so part, you know, what we thought was that, you know, if you look at the great canon of Superman, that there's not a lot that sh that depicts the early first year say in metropolis and uh so how so let's come at it from that perspective what is it like you know for him at that age i'd say you know 23 or 24 starting his life in the world uh being who he is um you know this is great because we kind of all came out to LA around that same time. We all, we all left college yeah. together. Yeah. We all came out and started our lives. And, and the way I think of it, and I don't know if you guys think of it this way, but I think of it as like sort of playing at being a grown up for right. a few yeah. years when you're just like, okay, I've got my own place and I got a job and I look <laughs> at me, I'm paying my bills, you know, and it doesn't feel real. But you go through those motions because that's what an adult is. I think that's where we, you know, I wanted to, that's what, to, to find yeah. Clark Kent, you know, mm -hmm. in that moment. And then, you know, you come to realize that, oh, wait, oh, this is actually just what being a grown up is. Like, it's right. just all sort of faking it and paying the bills. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so I felt like that, that was territory that hadn't been really covered in a big way. Yeah. And so it was a good way in. And, and especially being coming of age for him, there was a lot to to look into in terms of like you know what what makes him put on the suit you know what are the what are his motivations um uh to become superman uh not just you know we said it was it was kind of act two right for superman right act one you know krypton the rocket ship kansas the uh the you know superboy even the legion um but then act two is you know his it's the beginning of clark kent you know, I think early on, Jim Krieg said, like, kind of a motto when we started talking story was, this is a job for Clark Kent. You know, that was sort of yeah. our, our North Star uh, at the beginning. Um, and so that was our way in. And, um, you know, and I'll fight you if you try to call it an origin story. <laughs> I mean, 
That's I fair. I will I will respectfully say that I really like this movie that is not an origin story that shows Clark putting on the suit for the first time, meeting Lois for the first time, fighting his first big bad guy, working with Lex Luthor for the first time. But it's not an origin story. I hear what you're saying. It sounds like a coming of age story. I think I, I think that's more. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, they're, all they're missing is a dead body that they're all going out to find. Now, now, uh, now but, that I think about yeah. it, I, I probably should watch this movie. <laughs> Is that happening in the movie? I, I, one of the things that I, you know, and we're not going to give away the movie because you guys should definitely get yeah, it. It's yeah. available now uh, for digital. It's also out there for disc. Uh, when's it out there for disc? Is it coming soon? Yeah, so, so you can download it now on okay. VOD and uh, it'll be in on digital? 4K Blu-ray on September 8th. There you go. So really, really soon after this uh, interview drops, you can go pick it up. It's it's definitely worth picking up. You got some great characters in here, Tim. I mean, who came up with the idea of Lobo? Is this something you definitely wanted to have in the script? Like you were desperate to put this in there. It's this fantastic voiceover work uh, uh, there by the actor who plays Lobo and uh, Ryan you know, Hurst. Yeah, Ryan Hurst. And it's it's so funny because like it's a character that you would normally hate, but there's that kind of gruff charm about him. As much as you might not like it, uh, there's kind of a gruff charm about him. So was there a challenge for you? Because it's such a beloved character. Uh, was there a challenge for you trying to get Lobo right in your writing? You know what's, what's horrifying is how easy Lobo's voice came to me in the writing mm. process. Do you just drink a lot of whiskey and then just start <laughs> typing? Because that... I mean, it, it actually, I'm not kidding. I mean, I sat there in an office at Warner Brothers typing this and just these lines for Lobo just kept happening. And I, I wow. thought, huh, I'm really, at some point I thought I was, you know, you prepare, you're like, I'm gonna have to end up doing a Lobo dialogue pass later. As it's happening, I'm like, no, this is all, this sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> um, these limericks think, are great. Oh these God, limericks totally work. <laughs> what kind of monster am I? <laughs> this just comes to my head. You know, Butch came in uh, uh, day one and said, you know, we gotta have, let, let me do my Butch impression. <clears throat> We're going to have Lobo in the story. I want Lobo. <laughs> so, so we knew right from the beginning we were going to have Lobo. And, uh, and what was great about that was I love, you know, when, when I get some kind of little tidbit like that, you know, it's like, okay, let my mind sort of go crazy. What is it about Lobo that's interesting in a Superman story? Well, they're both the last of their people. They're both aliens. And then, you know, that was what led to sort of Martian Manhunter being a character in it as well. I thought, oh. you know, not to get in too deep here, but... I thought about sort of the the psychological makeup of you know this the alien hero and you know the id the super ego and the ego mm. that's moderating between the two and Superman is is the ego moderating between between the id that is Lobo and the super ego that is Martian Manhunter and then it was like all those pieces started falling into place yeah and wow. um, and I said uh, you know let's let's uh, let's make a movie. <laughs> well, and and to bring it up, like like Johnny said, I don't want to get into too many spoilers because I think that this it, it really is a joy to watch, uh, and there's so many fun surprises if you're a hardcore fan of the DC universe. Uh, one thing I do want to delve into though is one of the things that we talk about a lot here on the Geek Buddies uh, is Zack Snyder and Zack oh, Snyder's take on Superman. Why are you and bringing no, this up? Why are well, you bringing here, this up? All right. Here's why I'm bringing it up, because one of the things that I often say, and I've said it on the show and I've said it as we discuss it, is one of the things that I don't like about Zack Snyder is the, his take on Jonathan Kent as being very uh, sort of telling, basically telling his son, you should not go out and show people who you are. And I'm I, afraid I will say, that you're going to be and poked and applauded by a government that was intrusive and, and will invade your body. And what I want to say without getting into too many spoilers is what I really liked about Man of Tomorrow, which made me eat my words a little bit, is – it clearly is not that take of Jonathan Kent that I dislike because you travel in some of the very similar territories dealing with these aliens, dealing with the xen uh, xenophobia, dealing with some of the same issues that Snyder wanted to deal with. I just think you deal with them better uh, in a much more nuanced way as someone who actually gets Superman better than Zack Snyder does. So I wanted to give you that credit because wow. I really did see, I think, I, and I will say, uh, all, all Snyder knocks aside, if you do like that take of Snyder's, if you do like the fact that we really do focus on Superman being an outsider, being an alien, as you were saying, between Lobo, between Martian Manhunter, between Superman, Man of Tomorrow really delves into that territory, uh, but has a slightly different way in on it, a slightly different take that I think is a great balance between what Snyder tried to do with cl with cl balancing out with classic Superman. So props to you because you sold me on something that I thought I wouldn't like, and I did. Well, thank you for that. Um, I, I have a couple of thoughts about this. First of all, um, you know, I, I don't like to sort of, you know, talk about 
you know, other creators and what they're doing and what they've made. But but I, I have to actually come out in defense of Zack Snyder a little bit sometimes because I think that sometimes his take on Superman is a little bit more nuanced than people give it credit for. Yes. Um, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let, let the man talk, Johnny. Oh, let now the man let talk. the man talk? All right, go ahead, Tim. <laughs> no, but I, I think that, you know, when I watch Henry Cavill and I see him in the situations that he's, you know, that Zack Snyder puts him in, you know, I think that he is still this optimistic beacon of hope. It's just that the demands of doing a, a big budget live action studio feature film, there's a different type of story that audiences I think are expecting than what we get to do, you know, in animation and, and, and in comics. And, you know, I think it's a tough job to balance you know, the needs and the wants of the audience with, you know, what you expect from that character. And I think that character still in his movies is, you know, still manages to be Superman in spite of these, you know, incredible odds, the kind of odds that we don't necessarily put him in in this movie. Um, although there is, there are big stakes, there's big action, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the cosmic brawl right out the gate that you get with Zach. I just, I, I think that there's room in the multiverse for all kinds of takes yeah. on Superman and on all these characters. And, you know, I, I, I think we can enjoy all of them for different reasons. So that's that. In terms of Pa Kent, you know, I found my, this is funny, like my, my idea of, of Jonathan Kent is not a guy who, tell, who tells his kid to hide uh, and, and be careful. Um, I, I never, I, I, I thought the same thing. I've always thought that. I, I thought, no, you should encourage him to, 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 to be uh, Superman. It's sort of the, you know, that Uncle Ben kind of way. Mm. But when I sat down, I suddenly had a need in the story for that viewpoint. And I suddenly found as the voice of the character was coming out, and this may be where Zack Snyder was coming from, it's, it's his dad, you know? And yeah. what's, the, what's the first most important thing that his dad is gonna say to his son, who, who he knows the world it, it could, be, could be a real danger for? He tells him, you know, protect yourself at all costs because you're so precious to me that, you know, you have to protect yourself. He's willing to put us, even if he has the ideals of, you know, you have to, you have to get out there and save the world and, and use your powers for good. Even if he feels that, he doesn't say it because he's a dad. <laughs> and I think that's, that's true to what a dad would feel and would say. So it made sense in this story and in the context of the movie. But again, there's, there's, a great rich multiverse and there's different versions of Jonathan too. So. For sure. Well, and I do think, and I do think, but I mean, again, props to you because I, I love everything you said about that. Um, I was looking around online at what other people are saying about your movie. Don't, don't and, do don't and uh, <laughs> well, and actually I am not the only one that picked up on the similarities here. And I am also not the only one that was much more complimentary towards your take on it. I think that your portrayal of both Jonathan and Martha Kent uh, created a little bit more of a, argument and discussion about what to do with Clark and his powers. Uh, and I think similarly in the way that you portrayed this younger, uh, younger, more ambitious to your point, the I'm acting like the grown up. I've moved to the big city and I don't quite know what I'm doing. I think you created a Clark Kent who was a bit more actively seeking to be a hero. So I think you did a lot of really, really good stuff. Uh, so regardless of the comparisons to Zack Snyder, I think that this does create a really fun and interesting world uh, for Superman to play in. I mean, and Darren Chris, he just knocks me out. Yeah. He's, he's, he was such the right guy to play this version of Superman. He was. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, There's an earnestness different. to him that is a joy to experience again because sometimes you do forget uh, how much you enjoy the old Christopher. There were Christopher Re Christopher Reeve vibes to what he was doing that I uh, picked up on. Um, the 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 flat. I do want to give away one thing, and this is the flashback to his coming to Earth. The animation in that particular sequence. What in do you know? What influenced the animation there? Because that to me felt like. Uh, one of those uh, limited series that they did with Superman, and I can't remember what it was because the animation of uh, of Jor El and and uh, Super and Kal El's mom there, it looked oh, like a right. different type of style of animation, 
Then, and is that an homage to a series in the comic books? You know, uh, I wish, first of all, I had no idea what you were talking about when you said flashback to when he arrived. I was like, we, no, that's not a, his arrival. <laughs> um, but no, you, you're talking about when he, they're looking on the, the, the Kryptonian holographic yes. viewer um, uh, that, uh, oh, here's an interesting piece of information that nobody else has that I'm going to get in trouble for telling you. Okay, but perfect. <laughs> we, we, there was a scene that was cut later in the movie in which we explain what that device is. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's a Jedi, yeah. it's a Jedi holocron. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. That's right. Oh, you're marrying um, the universe, as I respect it. I, yeah, I, I, actually, I think it, I'm sure, I, I'm sure it's cut, right? It's not in the movie, right? They it's not in the movie. What it is, no, right? it's not. It, it, Clark, it's, it's, a, his, it's an historical record, and mm -hmm. Clark refers to it as it's a newspaper. Yeah. Um, so he's getting all this information about his people. Uh, the design elements, I wish I could speak to because okay. that's that's Butch Lukic and Chris Palmer and designers like Otto Schmidt, who's a comic book artist that came in and did a lot of work on the movie. Um, you know, they they had these these you know amazing sort of takes. I love how otherworldly mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Jor El and Lara look in that. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's almost it's almost Greek like. It's almost Greek like in the way they're designed yeah. for that remembrance of that compared to the modern day animation that they're using in that moment for everybody you, else. You you almost want to see a you know a, a scene on Krypton where everybody looks like that. And yeah, right. It's a, right. You know, but hey, there's no time for that. We got to get yeah. to the, um, we gotta get to Paris. What? <laughs> one other question about one other question about the design. Did you guys have a sexy booty quota to hit? Because there's a lot of butts. I mean, Lois Lane's butt is pretty prominent in this in this uh, movie. There. There's a lot of there's a lot of. Well, we don't see her naked butt. We see a lot no, of naked. But, but we see some naked boy butts. Yeah. yeah, we see yeah, some we, naked boy butts. Yeah, we that's true. Get naked boy butt, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, we do. Uh, that's PG thirteen. You know, there was there was nothing I could do. Like, and it's in the script. Like, I you know I said, you know we we had him wearing street clothes as the you know flying man over metropolis and um and you know it was important for him to discover that if he leaves the uh you know exosphere that solar radiation can be more effective uh for him and he can sort of power up more quickly yeah. and uh, but that meant that he had to re-enter the atmosphere in those street clothes and i thought well well ain't gonna fly I, doesn't work I, as a geek, it's like I can't watch that movie and see him come down in perfect clothes. Like, of course the clothes go away. They burn yeah, up. They're gone. That's fair. That's um, fair. And so he had to be naked. That's it's weird. right there in the script. Super D. Uh, the line in which when he, he pulls Lobo out of this out of this crater and he, he's beat him and he's, he's, he's holding him. And in, in, the, in the action of the script, it, it explains that he's holding him in just such a way. <laughs> To, to cover all the bits we ought not see. Yes. He really did too. Like he kind of held Lobo up and he was like, I am going to hold this in front of my super junk so you know, that we, we're all safe here. Super it, it had to be PG-13. It had to be PG-13. Uh, how precious were you with the relationship between Lois and Clark? As Michael said earlier, great point. We're seeing, all, we're seeing the kind of pseudo origin story for uh, Clark Kent slash Superman uh, in this movie coming of age what have you but we're also seeing the beginnings of this relationship between lois and clark which is in essence its own origin story the origin of this romance so how uh how precious were you and how you wrote that and how uh important was it for you to get that right and not feel like you were just copying what had come before well yeah i mean there were like th that day one meeting like one of the big things we talked about was lois lane i mean mm -hmm. butch and jim Creek and i all came at this the same way. We all kind of had the same sensibilities and you probably share them, which is that any great Superman story is, you know, involves Lois Lane. It has to, we have yeah. to see Superman through Lois's eyes because Superman sees the world through Lois. Mm -hmm. You know, he, she is kind of the, the best representation of humanity that he has found. And um, that's, I think where that relation, where the love is in that relationship. And, um, you know, in, and in loving her, he loves us. You know, that's kind of the thing with Superman, I think. Uh, so we <laughs> so we all <laughs> felt that going in. We knew that you had to get Lois right. But there was an interesting challenge because this was going to have to be sort of their first meeting. And, uh, you know, how do you, we couldn't, 
we didn't really feel like you could earn in the course of this one movie them jumping into a romantic mm. relationship right away. So you have to see the beginning spark of that, knowing where it's going to go. Mm. So that left, you know, what, what, what is it that, that Lois brings to Clark and to Superman in this story? And it ultimately hung on their professional relationship, which is half of their relationship. You know, they, mm. they have a personal romantic relationship, but they also work together and they have a professional relationship. Yeah. And uh, and so that was, you know, Jim Krieg said, you know, wh wh where does Superman, where, where else would he learn guile, uh, you know, and how to how to take a risk, roll the dice, you know, that farm boy from Kansas, you know, he, he's going to learn that from Lois. And um, and so he sees that right from, right from the beginning of when he sees her for the first time in the movie, mm -hmm. you know, he sees her do something extraordinary as a budding journalist that sets her apart from everybody uh, that was risky on her part. And, uh, and, and he immediately recognizes it as that's how you get ahead. That's, mm. you know, you, you, you have to walk the tightrope a little bit, yeah. uh, which he's going to need to do in the movie. He, you know, the, ultimately what the, the, the climax of the movie comes down to him taking the biggest risk of his life up to that point. Um, you know, and that is, you know, we know Superman fights for truth, justice in the American way, but the first among them is the truth. Yeah. And so he has to come to terms with the truth and tell the truth. To tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Mikey, you have a final question before we wrap up here? I do. Uh, wrap you know, up? I, yeah, we're at the I know. Mark. Listen, we could be here all day. We could... We can start. We can start with the reminiscing, and we could be here all day. Um, one final question. Uh, so clearly, you guys put a lot of thought, a lot of heart into this, and uh, you know, there's a, everyone is always talking about the right way to tell a Superman story, why this Superman story worked, why this Superman story didn't work. And so, in your estimation, as someone who has written him a few times now, what is the key to cracking a great Superman story? Oh, good question. Well. Now I'm going to have to come up with a better answer than the one I just gave. You got to get Lois <laughs> right. So let me think of a better one. Um, you know, I think Superman is at his best as a character, as, as uh, an archetype for us, when we see something of ourselves in him. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. which is always ironic because he is supposedly an alien right and i say supposedly because he's the most human of all of us i think and the more we can identify with him in his circumstances as someone who is seemingly all powerful you know um how do you identify with someone who has the powers of a god right uh but if you can do that then that's that's the way in and that's how we keep superman relevant that's how that's how he remains relevant. That's how he keeps us understanding how relevant he is. Mm -hmm. uh, in this movie, it was all about what it feels like, what it means to be an outsider. And, and I say that in general terms because it wasn't specifically like a, an immigration allegory, uh, although you can see that in any Superman story, really. But in this one, where there's three different aliens here who are all, you know, the last survivors of their people, you know, it was, it was broader than that so that everyone could find a way in. And I think that's a, a, the way to tell a story like this. For me, it was about being a closeted gay kid in Central Florida in the 90s. You know, that was- Hey, I, like. I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was, a, that was how I felt like an outsider and how I felt like the world was gonna be against me for the rest of my life. And it motivated, it, you know, it, it motivated all my choices, all my decisions. And, I, and that's, to me, that's something we can all understand, whether that's your story or whether your story is an immigration story or anything. We, we all have at some time in our lives felt like an outsider, felt different. So to see Kal-El go through that and hopefully triumph, um, I think means there's hope for all of us. And that's, that's, I think, what's at the heart of telling a good Superman story. Oh, 
That's a great answer and a fantastic way to end this interview. Um, we, uh, for Michael Vogel, uh, we can't thank you enough, Tim, for dropping the mic like that uh, in talking about this awesome new movie that is out now, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. As you said, it's out on VOD and digital now. Uh, you can pick it up physically on September 8th in 4K and other versions there uh, to watch. This is one you don't want to miss. This is actually, you know, uh, WB Animation That's is great. Done work over the last few years and this is another one to throw in the lexicon of some really great stuff and boundary pushing stuff that they're doing in animation which is fun to watch I think, yeah, like with, naked, yeah, just, uh, naked super naked superman but i will say like one of the things and i think this is great as well like uh i i as a super dc geek love all of the dc directed dvd movies i they really make them for the fans they really do that a lot of them are made so much for the fans that they're not necessarily the movie that you could show a non-fan and i think what's great about superman man of tomorrow is if you are a superman fan if you're a dc comics fan and you want to show one of your friends who's not necessarily in this world, in comics, something that's really going to show them what the world can do. This is a great entry point. Yeah. Show the man of tomorrow. It's a great introduction to these characters. As Tim said, it's a great year two, uh, follow up to the origin story that's not really an origin story, Superman, man of tomorrow. There you go. Uh, Tim, anything you want to promote or push? Uh, no, I just want to thank you guys. I want to promote you. I want to promote this show. Well, thank you guys you. are great. I can't believe that, you know, it takes getting a call from the publicist to tell me that, you know, we're going to get together. I, mean, <laughs> I, I can't wait until we stop recording and can, you know, talk about all the crazy times back in school. Agreed. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, well, well, let's times. wrap this thing up so we can talk about the good stuff. Absolutely. It's some crazy times in LA as well. I remember those Hawaiian yeah. shirts. Great stuff, Tim. All right. Well, follow Tim at I am Tim Sheridan and definitely pick this one up or watch it on VOD and digital Superman man of tomorrow. We'll talk to you next time with another interview here on the geek buddies. Take care until then.